Hello and welcome to another one of my videos Creating and Configuring VMS Data Stores We're going to be working with data stores themselves how to create them, work with them, manage them and all elements of those data stores The VMFS file system is designed used for relatively for small number of extremely large files built-in control and support for multiple host access, multiple ESX hosts and access for data stores at the same time. This is different from NFS and 2008R2. Even with Windows clustering turned on, only one host talked to a single file at the same time. So VMFS, very proficiently designed file system for using virtual environments with every large files, multi gigabyte files, as much as a terabyte. Now even with the improvements of VMFS, there are still a limitation coming to play when they are extremely large data stores. The process we have to go through in order to bring back the resurrect that data store volume if we have an experience volume problems. The primary use for today perhaps hit one of their maximums, so not only hit one of their maximums, so not only hit one of their maximums, even below that you may actually not just want to create lots of large VMFS data stores, backing up data stores will be challenging restoring them or recovering them. The entire volumes could be challenging as well, so creating small number of data stores or turn the size that fits your ability lots of virtual machines on them still small enough to restoring them and recovering them we're going to create them a nice SCSI connection what we're going to do is create a nice SCSI connection to the remote storage for VM motion to work we do have to have the shared storage whereby all the different ESX hosts connect into the shared storage and all the VMK files get hosted on the shared storage. I'm going to go out to storage adapters. And what we're going to do is add a iSCSI adapter. And you click OK. I've added the storage adapter into my adapters list. The next step is to look and view its properties. So if you right click on it and go properties. Now in the properties screen you can see information about the connection. You can see the IQN name, the target discovery methods. If you click on the configure button, this will actually show you where the IQN name is. This is an alias for the storage. You can change that and put anything. CHAP Challenge Handshake Protocol. It's not the best one in the world. It's not the best one in the world. But iSCSI recognizes the authentication back and forth to the target and the initial which uses a shared secret a name a secret associated to the target and the host as well a network configuration screen for setting up the VM kernel port binding between which VM kernel port adapter you want or port you want for the use of iSCSI we need to go and click add This is where we set up the VM kernel port bindings. I created a V switch over there and associated it with VMK1. We want to bind this with the iSCSI. So we click OK. And we we'll rescan the adapters. Okay, the next step is to go into dynamic discovery. Here we need to add our storage server. Let's put the IP address in. Click a OK. The 
this has done a discovery to my storage identifier target and it's picked it up click close rescan I am using vSphere 5 so I need to actually select this one for my data store I want the full maximum of the drives and then go finish I have created a shared storage data store this is the kind of storage one would like to put my virtual machines on so they can support a cluster vMotion or data store clusters to the networking device what I want to do here is create another VM kernel port and associate it with another IP address then I want to assign this IP address to the associated with another physical adapter. What that does, it actually changes the physical adapter with the vKernel port ultimately to storage processor, storage area, network. Let's go and do that. Properties, go to network adapters, and then we click add button, and then we go to the VM NIC3, which is available for me. Then click next, and then we go finish. You can see here I have the second network adapter on the right hand side but I have not yet done because I need to associate with this physical adapter with a VM kernel port. This has to be a one to one mapping for the purpose of iSCSI to work. Click properties. What I want to do here is create another storage VM kernel port. I'm going to label this storage2 and I'm going to go next and we're going to put the IP address in. Two oh six and then the subnet mask. And we'll go next. And then we'll go finish. Now what I have created are two different adapters plugging into two different ports. If we click on properties and then we click onto the storage 2 and then we go edit and if we go over to the NIC team in what we need to do is we need to click on the override failover. I'm going to move the VM NIC1 into unused. Click OK. Okay, click storage click edit we need to go to NIC team in then we need to go to override and this way we want to put the NIC 3 into the unused so move it down there click OK and this comes up with a warning which will be bound with an ISCSI nice initiator which yes we do want that ok close both of the adapters are considered active adapters for both the vKernel ports ISCSI and its multipathing configuration does not allow you to have multi adapters to have a connection of a single IP address so the only way to make this work was to override the switch failover and move the adapter down to the unused adapters and I needed to do this for storage 1 and 2 the last step that's required click on storage adapters I need to adjust the network configuration here for how I have to bound these different kernel ports in the last stage of the iSCSI initiator. Okay, click on the properties. Go to the network configuration. Now I have bound those different kernel ports in the last stage to the iSCSI initiator. Click add and want to select a V switch one uh, storage two, so you click on that, add that. I have now bound both of these two storage ports to the iSCSI initiator for the purpose of running the traffic across the connection. Click yes. Now rescan the adapters. You have the ability to look at the path information for the connection of the iSCSI software for the adapters all the way up to the storage. To targets. 
one device, two paths. I have now successfully created a failover capable and load balance connection between iSCSI storage and my server. This is a good thing. Go back to the storage here and we can go to the data store I was working with, VM storage. Let's click on properties. We need to go to the manage paths. The paths are also the path policy associated with these two paths. There are by default fixed path policy for this connection. What I want is to use instead of fixed path policy is the round robin. So if you click on the round robin, this path is associated with true load balancing across both connections. Robin is necessary for load balancing to complete the load balancing and failover configuration. Hi, Scuzzy. Thank you for watching another one of my videos.